Hey, podcast fam. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Crank and Boom podcast. Today's episode is a super fun one for me because I get to reminisce about the very surreal and amazing moment where our business was profiled in the New York Times. But it's not just about appearing in one of the world's top publications, which was amazing, or what that does for your name recognition and the awareness of your brand. It's really about the story of you and your business. Whether you think you even have a story, I'm here to tell you that you do. You may think that no one cares about your story. It's all about the products. But knowing your story is empowering in so many ways. And as I've talked about in many of our previous episodes, the story will ground you as a way to remember your mission and why you're doing all of this in the first place. Remember, people don't buy products. They buy into people and they buy into emotions. They buy into a story or a narrative that fits into their life somehow. So we're going to be talking today about your story and thinking about how your story came to be, what your story means, how to tell your story, and how to get that story out to the public at large. And who knows where that story may take you years or days or decades from now. Okay, friends. So picture this. Tao Green is 37 weeks pregnant. I am in the hospital. I am being wheeled in to the OR about to give birth to our now almost four-year-old Bindi Sue Green. There's probably three or four tech nurses people who are wheeling me in and getting me prepped for surgery to have this baby. Now Mike is over in the distance, kind of walking by the bed, refreshing on his phone. And if you can imagine the folks who are probably looking at like, what are you doing on your phone? Your wife is about to give birth. We're about to go into surgery. Surely you've got something better to do than to play on your phone. Well, he actually did not because he was refreshing the New York Times website because we knew that the digital version of the New York Times story that was going to have us featured in it, Crank and Boom and Mike and I, we were going to be featured in the story. We knew it was coming out sometime on that day, which was July 2nd, 2019. We're going to the ER and we explain why he's playing on his phone while we're all prepping for surgery. We're about to get the story in the New York Times. And as we're about to start the surgery, Mike says, it's here. <laughs> and he shows everyone his phone and says, this is not the baby. The baby was still inside. The story had come out in the New York Times and we had been in national press before, but this was something that felt very special and very close to my heart because of what the story was about. Because it was the first time it had happened and we were just so excited and having that moment and getting to share that moment with a whole OR team along with having it attached to the birth of our little baby and everyone came out healthy and happy out of that whole experience. It's just a miracle and just an amazing way to remember this very momentous occasion. The story they were doing, the print version was coming out on the 4th, The Birth of America, and it specifically was talking about immigrants and ice cream. I think there were probably eight different families and businesses featured in this article. We were one of them. There was an Iranian family, there was a Mexican family, there was a Puerto Rican family, and they talked about their ice cream business and how their culture reflects into the ice cream that they have. We talked about coconut ice cream. That was our very first flavor. And the whole thing came about because of our Thai restaurant. So being able to take this really fun story of which is 100% us being an immigrant family, our Thai-ness, and merging it into the ice cream that we're doing it just felt all very full circle. It wasn't just about what are America's best ice creams, which is an awesome story, but being able to go a little deeper and being able to say this family had a Thai restaurant, they started making ice cream, and now they have this ice cream company that is well-loved and one of America's favorites. So that whole thing was just very, very cool. One of the lessons I've learned as an entrepreneur is celebrating. Taking time to intentionally honor your achievements and share them with others is a big part of what makes the whole journey worth it. And one of my favorite ways to do it is with food, of course. 
Gold Belly is our partner in how we deliver our ice cream to customers all over the U.S. so they can make their special moments even more special wherever they are. And whatever milestone you're celebrating with your friends and family, Gold Belly has just the thing. Whether you need Guy Fieri's trash can dessert nachos for dad's birthday or Martha Stewart's famous banana pudding for your sister's baby shower, Gold Belly can ship it right to your door and make your event even more special. So if you haven't taken advantage of Gold Belly's amazing offerings, now's the time. Run over to their website at goldbelly.com and make your celebration unforgettable. Tao here, popping in to share my excitement about one of my favorite companies in the whole world, Holly Hill & Co. If you are like me and are obsessed with food, especially local food, you will appreciate those special ties that happen around the table. Holly Hill & Co. believes, like I do, that food creates connection and community unlike anything else. That's why they take care to strengthen the ties across the generations between family, the farmer, and the land, all the way to the food that ends up on your table. You can experience exactly what this means at one of Holly Hill's nine unique Central Kentucky restaurants and through their beautiful emails. If you're in Kentucky, be sure to find the nearest location and get ready for an amazing experience with the most fantastic food. Holly Hill's co-founder is none other than my dear friend, James Beard-nominated chef Weta Michael, who's been a force on the Kentucky food scene for over 20 years. Learn more about their incredible food community by visiting hollyhillandco.com, where you'll find stories, recipes, how-tos, and even curated gifts. Again, that's hollyhillandco.com, and let them know that Tao from Crank and Boom sent you. What makes a compelling story? Every person on this planet Earth, I believe, has a compelling story in some way. And usually those points of bravery or conflict or overcoming, those are the greatest points to always bring out in a story. What are those things that are aspirational for other people to look at and say, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be brave. I want to try something new. And I think that's why our story is compelling. And I think that's why a lot of people connect to it because they see that we've kind of charged into doing business a certain way, being fairly unapologetic about it, and just being very true to ourselves. And I think that has made Crank and Boom so special. We're doing something that's not kind of typical for a business. And that's something we showcase and we're proud and we're loud about it. And we love talking about it. So when you are thinking about your story, think about those moments that make you different than someone else. Maybe it's your background. Maybe it's a time that you did something you didn't think you could do. Maybe it is doing something that so many other people do that you might feel is mundane. Something you might think is boring actually could be something that could connect with a lot of people as well. So sometimes you just have to put yourself out there. And one of the beautiful things about the internet and social media now is it allows us to get in front of so many different kinds of people all over the world. And so you just never know who you might connect with. So the New York Times had actually reached out to us. And at this point, this is 2019. I was the PR person. I did any of our media engagements. I did any press releases that we would do. But something about what we were doing, the word was getting out. This is what I think is kind of the magical part of all this is that we didn't have a publicist. We didn't actively reach out to these media outlets. They were finding us. And it was somehow through word of mouth because it was either through them looking for craft ice creams online or it was through someone who had come through Lexington and had told them about it. The scope and the breadth of reach that we were able to get in just a short amount of time was really amazing to me. And it really said to me, hey, something about what we're doing is resonating with people because we had been doing this Thai food thing for almost 10 years and nobody was knocking on our door wanting to do a story about our little Thai restaurant. But something about this ice cream 
seemed to move people and people wanted to do stories on us. We were actually featured on Cooking Channel's Best Thing I Ever Ate. And that was also a cold reach out from the Cooking Channel. I feel like part of that is luck, but I also believe in creating your own luck as well. If you don't have the ability to have a publicist, which we still don't have a publicist, strategies that you can use that can get you noticed is having a nice website. Please don't have a website that looks like it's from Netscape from 1985 because that's how people find you. And I think having a really strong Google profile, there's a way for your business to create a profile on Google where people are searching the most for things, making sure your website is SEO optimized. And the other thing that we did that I felt was a bit of an investment because, again, we're kind of a low budget operation was actually investing in good pictures. And we had several different photographers that we've worked with through the years. And starting out, maybe it's not a flashy super photographer that does food photography and charges you $1,000 an hour. Maybe it's a good friend who wants to dabble in photography and happens to take good pictures, maybe they can help you out. That's what we did. We had a friend who was just kind of starting out in professional photography and was able to do it at a much more affordable budget than someone else who will charge you like $1,000 per hour for their work. I found that being able to say, hey, this is the beautiful stuff that we are doing. And being able to use images is so important online because that is where people are going to find you. And that's just not for media. That's for average Joe public person who wants to see, is this a legitimate business? Does it look like they have their things in order? Does the food that they're serving look appetizing? Things shouldn't be a mystery. You should put as much information out on your website about what a person's experience will be as much as possible. This is more specifically talking to food businesses. Post your menu, post your specials, post those things. And now there are so many tools out there that make websites so easy and affordable. Whereas back in the day, you had to hire a developer and that's expensive. But now there's so many free and affordable tools to help you basically have your business card online so that when people look for you, they have good vibe feelings about what you're doing and who you are. Once you've kind of nailed down what pieces of your story you're wanting to tell or what perspective you're wanting to tell, I think it's really important to get your story telling in a way that is easily digestible for other people. So for me, I found that as I was doing more interviews and doing more speaking engagements that people were asking a lot of the same questions. And so I knew whatever that question was, I had a pretty good answer to that, that I could answer pretty quickly and naturally. And I would also find different ways to have different versions of that story, mostly in a time sense. So if I was literally doing a 20 second elevator pitch, an important thing is to also know who you're talking to. I think that's probably one of the most important things to key into when you are building relationships with people is to figure out who it is that you're talking to and know your audience. So when you're telling your story, there's probably certain facets of that story that will resonate more with that person than someone else. So if I am talking to someone who is working on a construction project, who wants to know about how we built our projects, I would probably give a different aspect of our story to him than I would maybe someone who is a stay-at-home mom who just lives a different life. How am I going to connect with this person? Find out things about them. Find out what it is they're curious about. And I think that's when you are able to bring value to other people with your story. That is what's going to make the biggest impact. What are the most important things you need to consider when you are finding and telling your story from a business perspective? Number one, I would have your story ready to tell. Think about what aspects of your story are important, what aspects are compelling, and what aspects are going to be interesting and of value to other people. And practice 
what that story looks like in different lengths and situations. I would also say don't overthink it. Just tell people your story and tell people how you got there and you will naturally fall into something that will feel a little bit more natural and less rehearsed. Number two, listen to who you're talking to and know your audience because that is going to dictate what parts of your story are going to bring the most value to that audience. So really important to know who is listening and what will they get from what you are saying. And then number three, which I would say is the very most important takeaway, is be true to you. Own your story, all aspects of your story, because we are all unique human beings. And every little piece of us, good, bad, ugly, is important to who we are and where we are now and how far we've come. And you just never know what piece of your story might really hit a nerve with someone else. And that is where you're going to make the most impact. It's not presenting the very best version of ourselves. It is presenting the real version of ourselves so that other people can connect with that. And also because people don't want to feel alone. This is the whole point of why we're doing this podcast, because people shouldn't have to feel alone in this journey in entrepreneurship because it's hard. It is hard. It is lonely. It is a difficult journey. So be true to yourself and you stick to that. You cannot lose. Thank you so much for listening to the Crank and Boom podcast. If you want business advice and tactics like this every week, click that follow button wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode with us. Also, if you like what you heard today, it would mean so very much to me if you would leave us a review. That helps other people find us. And I would also love to hear more about what topics you'd like for us to dive into on the show. I can't wait to meet you here again soon. Until next time, peace. This is a production of Four Eyes Media.